Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another resin video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable little resin nutcracker with this adorable little resin nutcracker mold. I love molds like this because they make it really easy to pour and to add details. This one had a lot of really cute details that you can bring out with paint or mica powder, alcohol inks, whatever you like. I use some paint today. I'm going to show you how to mix your resin, how to prep your mold, and how to make this little nutcracker that I'm then going to take and glue onto an adorable little nutcracker sign. It says, uh, well, visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. I can never remember the exact quote. I just know that it has sugar plums in it because my, uh, my sweet little dachshund, she's around here somewhere, Sugar, her full name is actually Princess Sugar Plum Fairy. So I don't know that it's relevant to this video, but I love ballet. I love the Nutcracker. I danced ballet from the time I was two till I was in high school and I started um, cheering. So it's always a very special place in my heart. And I, I just knew I had to make this little Nutcracker and have a little sign for him to hang up for Christmas. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to actually... Uh, start with mixing our resin and then we will move into the rest of the project. Let's go. For our resin today, we are going to be using Maker Poxy, which is perfect when you are doing uh, any kind of craft projects. So the main goal for this is you're going to be using equal parts of part A and part B. So whether you're doing 50 milliliters or 500, we'll use equal portions. So 25 of part A and 25 of part B or 250 of A and 250 of B. I use these larger bottles with the pumps because when you're pouring in large portions, it's a lot easier than pouring them by hand. But if you're doing small projects, say this is your first resin project, you may get just the smaller bottles and use smaller portions. Now, because I'm doing a big pour, I'm using a big silicone cup to mix in with a big silicone spoon. You can use smaller cups and even popsicle sticks or disposable cups. I have quite a few of these uh, Tiny cups, this one holds 200 milliliters. So even 50 in this cup would be just fine for the projects we are doing today. So right now we should be, yep, right around 50 milliliters. So for our summit sign, that is more than enough go ahead and mix it. You'll mix for three minutes, stirring evenly, scraping the bottoms and the side. But like I said, I am working on several projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going and I will be back in a second once this guy is all mixed up. Now, if this is your first resin project, Make sure you are safe. I am working outside with proper ventilation. If you can't work outside, an open window, a fan, um, a respirator is always perfect. I will link the ones I use down below. You also want to make sure you have gloves on. As far as resins go, this one is safe but all resins are toxic to some degree. So you'll want to take the proper safety precautions and then you're good to go. Same as if you were painting a room, you want to use gloves, respirator, everything that you might need for breathing and fumes. So, all right, I'll see y'all in a minute. All 
right, it has been about four minutes. We're gonna go ahead and pop all the bubbles that come to the top. And now we're going to set this aside for just a second. The bubbles will keep rising to the top and we're gonna get our colors ready. pink. These are just craft paints, acrylic craft paints. You want to do about 10% paint to uh, resin. You can do a little more, but it will start to mix kind of funny. And while you can use all kinds of mica powders and alcohol inks, there are all kinds of different things you can use to mix into your resin. You do want to probably test most of what you're using. Not all craft paints will bond properly with your resin. Well, uh, things like mica powder or alcohol inks that are mint, that are made to mix with resin, will do a better job. This is a tester's brand paint. It is a craft paint. Um, you use it really for hobby things like uh, model trains. My dad's huge on model trains. I grew up making little houses and things with him. And so this, I mean, it just gives you the best, most metallic look. Love it. I'm gonna do a little bit of this metallic rose gold. Always wanna make sure you mix or shake. As pretty as this paint is for most projects, I don't like how it looks in resin. And that is another thing to learn is that the paint will not necessarily look the same it does uh, once it's cured in resin as it does in the bottle. So before you do a huge piece, always best to test. All right, we are also going to be using these rose gold flakes, but we'll be adding those right to our design as well as probably into some of the clear at the end. So I'm not gonna do an individual cut for these. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and start pouring this into our cups. While it is easier to mix all our resin in one and then disperse it amongst the paint, it is um, risky because our resin being all together in one bucket will start to cure fast. The more resin in one spot, the hotter it gets, hotter it gets, faster it cools. So. We want to go ahead and separate this out into smaller cups so we have a longer work time. There we go. Need a paper towel. We're going to try to put about 100 milliliters in each of these cups. For our different projects that we're doing, like I said, we're going to need very little for the actual gather sign. Um, and then the other four or five molds I'm doing will need more. All right, try not to wipe as much resin as we can. We can always add more resin to the cups, so it's always best to kind of start with a moderate amount and then move on. All right, like I said we don't need as much in that one, so we've left about half in here. I think we're going to need more than that, but work. Make sure we put the parts with the silicone dripping down on our silicone mat protector table. Now let's stir these up. You can add more paint if you need it. The more paint you add, the more uh, solid or opaque that color is going to be. The less paint you add, the more transparent it will be. Okay, 
think. This is for our nutcracker. You guys are following along over at the summit, the Christmas uh, Cricut Craft Fest, and you want to check out all these other projects I'm talking about, you can head over to my YouTube and all of the videos will make their way there. But if you are at the Craft Fest, you're probably only interested in our little gather sign because he's going to be so cute. As we mix, it is going to help those micro bubbles come to the top, but the faster you mix, the more bubbles you're going to introduce. So still slow and steady. We're looking good. Let's go ahead and pop all the bubbles that have risen. You can really see them in this uh, copper. The uh, oil based of that tester's paint really brings the bubbles to the top. The thinner the layer of resin, the easier the bubbles are to pop. So, you know, I'm just gonna keep popping them as we pour all our different resins. All right, let's start pouring. First up, our nutcracker. So as you can see, I went ahead and I put white paint in all of the recesses so that we will have a really cute little uh, relief between the two colors. And all I did was use a little pipette to pop that white in those recesses. All right, I'm gonna take our pink and we're going to start to pour in a thin stream, making sure we get into all those crevices. Now, as you can tell, this is a big mold. We are obviously not going to be doing the entire mold all the way full for our little sign. We don't need a two inch thick nutcracker. So we want them to be just thick enough for our sign. I'm going to guess that is going to be about 100 milliliters of resin thick. And that's looking pretty good to me. He's about a quarter of an inch up the way on the side here. I want him thick enough that he's not going to break, thin enough that he won't stand out too, too hard on our sign. And there we go. Let's go ahead and pop those bubbles. Gonna make sure he stays level as he dries. That way we don't have to sand the back. We can put him right on our sign and we're pretty much good to go. This is gonna be such a cute little nutcracker. Let's go ahead and we will leave him to care for tomorrow. Our little nutcracker friend, he is cured. It's been 24 hours and as you can see, he is ready to get out of this mold. When they start separate on their own, you really know, but we're just going to peel this guy back, all the edges here. Now, 50 milliliters, you can see on the side, is about a third of the mold. So if we were doing the entire mold and not just enough for a sign, we would have needed about 150 milliliters. But as it is, we're just going to keep popping this guy out of his mold. Dum -da -da -dum. 
trying to free all these little details on the front without just ripping them out of here. Really, I've never had a problem with that, but there we go. Oh, I was really worried about this guy because all of the white paint that I put in here with my pipette, I, I'm not sure. I think it was the paint, not the mold, because I did three molds from this brand. The other two worked fine, but my white paint was so flaky and it just kept like these sides kept flaking off and only leaving the front, but not consistently. And you can see like on the hat, all those crackles, the paint kept cracking. It, it ended up fine. He looks perfect. Even with the crackles, he just looks a little, uh, he looks a little weathered. I don't mind that, but the only difference could have been, you know, if I would have just poured the pink, I could have easily painted this guy afterwards, but I don't know. I just like it when the paint is in the resin and he's all one piece. I find that when you paint, uh, on top of the resin, you often get a really matte look and then you have to do a top coat in order to bring the shine back in. And with all these little details, these are literally like, you know, recessed areas. I didn't want to have to do a top coat. So if you want to see what I mean, um, I did some resin gnomes last year for Christmas. They're really not Christmas related other than I wanted them at Christmas time. Um, but I painted those afterwards and then did a top coat. So I will link that video down below. In the meantime, we are going to check this out. Oh, it's like it was made to go together because it was. This is why I like designing my own SVGs to go with my resin pieces because then they literally go together perfectly. I'm just, just drinking it in. All right, y'all. I hope you liked this project. If you did, let me know. Let me know what you would do differently. I kind of want to take, I don't know, like maybe some multicolored paint pens and just draw little dots on this guy. I want him to be a little bit more colorful, but I like the pink and white simplicity of it. So I probably, I probably won't. Maybe I'll pour another one and try it. But in the meantime, this guy's finished. I'm just gonna put some super glue on the back here to fix him to our sign. You could also put some Velcro if you want to be able to take them off and switch them out. But this guy is a permanent fixture for this sign. So I'm going to super glue him together and we are done. I hope you liked this. If you did, make sure you're following because I have more resin projects coming out. Cricut and resin. I love doing these little signs with the 3D resin elements and the Cricut. I don't, I don't know why they just make me happy. So I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.